Baby Tego season is here. We just see the first baby Tegus from the, these, these are, they're all gonna run out. Once yeah, they are. <laughs> wow, look at this one, dude. This one right here. Yeah, that one's like a funky neck button. This is from our ultra purple female, yeah. AKA Gaia. Oh, okay, I told you they're gonna run out. Grab this one, grab this one. Okay, so look, these are the baby Tegus. Look at the neck pattern on this little guy here. I'll show you better in a second, but. These guys are from Gaia, right, Gaia? Gaia. And Prometheus. And Prometheus. So they're 50% possible head albinos. And they are blue cross tegus. We're going to go ahead and pop these here. And then we're going to rub out some of the remaining eggs. So it's pretty neat, real quick. Um, so a lot more like the other species, like the black and white and the Chacoans have this, but you can still see some green on their heads. And they actually lose that as they get older. Especially the black and whites, they're born like super green heads and they're gonna lose that as they get older. So look, this is one of the eggs where one of the babies hatched. I just wanna show you guys the yolk in here. There's a lot of yolk. Um, this clear yolk is good because they could absorb that. But when you see a lot of that thick, uh, like sticky yolk, that's not the best because they can't really absorb that. Um, so that's probably, you know, if it has a lot of that sticky yolk, that's sometimes why you'll get smaller babies because they don't absorb all the yolk. Um, and when there's a lot of clear yolk, you know, you'll get some bigger babies like this one here. But let's uh, go ahead and rub out the yeah, remaining eggs. The ones that are that one's this. good. That's the biggest egg in there. Look at this. It might be a monster tiger. So let's let's rub this guy out so he comes out. So what we're doing here is we're trying to wake up the baby tagu basically. And while I'm scratching this, I'm kind of like breaking the embryo. And once the embryo breaks, the baby will wake up and he'll move around and slit the, the eggshell with its egg teeth. And then we'll have a baby uh, tagu. <laughs> so we're here. The baby's to hatch. And the reason we can scratch these out is because we know they're full term because the, already the, the clutch mates hatched. So we know they're full term. There's some other eggs in there that are from another female that obviously we're not going to scratch out. But that's why we marked these because so we know which were, you know. There you go. There you go. There's the first one. Look at that mm. head. Mm. That's a pretty one. Break out. Yeah. Mm. There you go. Look at that. I don't feel this one moving at all. Yeah, that one might be good. It's pretty big. Yeah, but look at the back. Boom, first birth of life. Yep. So, it's a shame that these guys got banned just when Tegu season is here, but I might have to cut this one open. I don't really feel anything moving yet. You want to bring me a uh, little razor from the gecko room? Or, or the one that's here. There's one here? Yeah, the one we use for the boxes. Oh, true. So I'll go ahead and cut this open. It's very important I don't go like this, just in case I'll just cut it from the side like that. And then I'll kind of just open this up. Look at all that yolk popping out. Look at this baby here. No, he's good, he's good. Yeah, he's good. Cool. So, I, mean, I hope he's good. Might still be in the embryo, still sleeping. So I'm gonna rub him, rub him. Or maybe he's dead. Nope, he's alive, see? <laughs> Just gotta wake him up. Wake him up, wake him up. Get him to take a, there he goes. There he goes. So again, you see a lot of that. This is natural, like they'll still, they'll always have some of this, but you mostly want that clear fluid in there. Throw it away from the Yeah. This one, this one's about to come This is the last one. You feel them wiggling in there. When yeah, you feel them moving, because you'll wake them up. Look, this egg doesn't look too good, 
but we're still gonna try. You see this egg? This one. Now look at this one. Look at this one. I'll start with this one. Let's try. Let's try. Yep. Yeah, I see him. Bloop. <laughs> and just like that. Yeah. All right. So now we gotta set up the baby tegus. So for any baby tegu, we're gonna put all the babies in here, but even if you have one, it's good to have like a 20 gallon long so they can kind of thermoregulate because we're gonna put the heat and the UVB on this side. So if the tegus wanna like move over to this side and they wanna cool off, they can do so. If it's a 10 gallon, it's not gonna allow them, you know. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. We got dogs kissing us. <laughs> anyways, anyways, all right. So, if you have a 10 gallon tank, it's not gonna allow them to thermoregulate on their own. The, the hot spot is gonna seep over to this side too much. In a 20 gallon long, it gives them enough room to thermoregulate on their own. So we wanna give a mulch as a substrate. This is the mulch we use. This is from uh, Home Depot. Yeah, it's a Depot brand. This is the one that doesn't have any uh, added colors or pesticides yeah um, we use this pretty much for all the animals so you can go ahead and give them a, a big layer because a lot of them we like to give them cypress mulch because it's one they can burrow the tegus do like to burrow and also it, it holds humidity pretty well you don't want these guys dry like a bearded dragon you guys you want them a little bit more tropical but not too much so the mulch is perfect for that um, you can use soils as well, cocoa fiber, coconut oil, all that stuff, but we do like the cypress mulch a lot, mainly because it does allow them to burrow. So we'll use this as substrate. You could also use like um, peat moss or a, a mix of like sphagnum moss, mulch, uh, bark is all good. But you just want to make sure that they have a, you know, a good amount, maybe like two or three inches of substrate. That way they can burrow if they want to. And um, you want to make sure that it's pretty humid. Like this is a good amount, you know, it's not wet. You don't want the substrate to be wet, but you do want it to be humid because babies especially, they're going to require a little bit higher humidity. They're going to want to stay hydrated and that's just going to help them. So we'll add two big water bowls in here since there are going to be about eight tegus it was. Yeah, so we're going to add two big water bowls in here and then these branches. These are some branches that we found outside. Now, when you have branches like this that you find outside and you want to use them, just make sure that the wood is not toxic um, or the plants or whatever. And when you use them, before you use them, if they fit in your oven, you're going to want to bake them for like 350 or 400 degrees for about 15 to 20 minutes. And that should kill, you know, all the ants or whatever is in there. So we're going to go ahead and put these in here. This is going to allow the baby tegus to kind of like bask and perch up. So maybe we'll put like the, the basking spot on one end, here or something. Maybe we'll do this. You know, we could, we could put a rock there or something. But basically, baby tegus are gonna be kind of like arboreal for a little bit. Not arboreal, but they're gonna like to climb up on this and use this as a perching spot. And. Yeah, <laughs> but, all right, we'll, we'll get the water bowls in here, and um, yeah, that's good. Okay, maybe not. Get this, try to get this as stable as possible. We'll, we'll, we'll use the rock. We'll all use the rock. Over, yeah. So let me grab the water bowls. Okay, so we got the branches down. Um, this is gonna provide enough climbing area for them. It's you know pretty sturdy here, so it's not gonna fall on them. And they got two water bowls. The baby tegus are gonna eat basically crickets, a lot of insects at this size. You don't wanna do too many rodents. You don't wanna do too many pinkies at this size. Mostly like um, little uh, cockroaches, crickets, worms. And that's what's gonna get them growing the best. You could also do some turkey. You could also do some like dog food, um, cat, dog food. food cat food. But the the main thing is you want to do you know like baby insects, crickets and stuff. At this size, they could eat adult insects, so like adult uh, crickets. 
um, the water. Like I said, we provided two water bowls. Just make sure it's not too deep so they don't drown or anything, especially like the little runs. But a tegel like this, this is a pretty, you know, healthy, robust animal. It's not gonna, I can put this in the water and it's just gonna find its way out. So, um, that's fine. But yeah, like I said, 20 gallon tank for a baby tegel is fine. This is probably gonna last them a couple months. Uh, maybe like three months, if that, they grow pretty quickly. After this, you wanna probably put them in a 40 gallon enclosure. And from a 40 gallon, after it grows, outgrows that, you probably wanna move it into like, it's adult enclosure. So like a six foot by three foot enclosure would be ideal. Um, but yeah, these guys will grow up to be around, you know, four feet long. The blue tegus are a little bit smaller than the Argentine black and whites or the reds. And yeah. Hopefully happy little guys in here. We'll set up the basking spot here or maybe around here. So it's just kind of high. Yeah, that all. Really cool. That's gonna look really cool when it's an adult. So as David was mentioning, we're gonna put the hot spot around here. You guys want a hot spot of about like 95, 100 degrees, and um, it's also very important to give them UVB. Um, they're you know they're lizards. They're out in the day basking a lot, so you do want to give them not desert UVB, not rainforest, right in the middle. Which if it depends on the brand you're using, it's gonna be like UVB 150. Um, and so they're gonna bask in that all day. This is kind of high, so we're gonna put on the lower side, and um, they're just gonna, you know, bask in the early day, early morning, and then eat during the afternoon, and basically all day. These guys will eat as soon as there's anything hits the ground. Yeah. Um, like David was mentioning, the crickets, uh, any of the bugs. We also like to do like a meat mix where we grind up like different meats, like chicken hearts and gizzards, ground turkey, ground beef. Um, so they're gonna be eating a little bit of everything, everything dusted with calcium with D3. And these guys are gonna grow up to be happy, healthy, massive tegus. Yeah, and the calcium we use is a calcium, uh, um, Rapashi Calcium Plus from Rapashi. It's all around, so you don't need to add any additional vitamins. Um, the D3 is already in there, the calcium is already in there, um, the proper amount of D3 and all of that, so you're not gonna have to worry about using two different supplements. And like Manny said, the UVB is important because that's what's gonna help them synthesize that calcium and that's what's gonna get them growing, you know, normal and, and their bones are gonna keep them strong. So animals like this little runt here, especially animals like that, they're gonna need, you know, that calcium to help them, you know, get through the first couple of weeks. And you notice when the animals don't have enough UVB or calcium, they start, they can develop things like metabolic bone disease. So it is very, very important that your supplementation and your lighting is on point. All right, guys, that wraps up this video. We are super excited to finally hatch the baby tegus. And make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms, Instagram, Snapchat, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. We got it all. Make sure you follow us. Um, hope you guys are as excited as we are to finally hatch some up more tegus and hopefully soon some albino tegus. Yeah, stay tuned for that video. That's going to be so dope. All right, guys, till next time. So like the merch, you like the merch, check the website. You like the merch, check the website.